So that's why we have to make sure that we as the people of God make sure that whenever we talk, whenever we speak, uh, let us speak with uh, season. Let us speak with wisdom. Let us speak with knowledge and understanding. Because a lot of times if we're not careful, uh, the enemy wants us to speak fast anyway. Praise the Lord. And sometimes you can speak prematurely and cause great harm. I believe we said a few weeks ago that sometimes you can be saying the right thing, but you could be saying it at the wrong timing. And then not only at the wrong timing, but you could be saying it in the wrong spirit. Amen? Did you not know that we can say the same thing, but how we say it, what determines how it affects an individual? Right? Just like uh, people sometimes, our lips can say one thing and our heart can be saying another. If that makes sense. Our lips can be saying, I love you. But our heart can be saying, I can't stand you. Y'all agree with that? My lips can say, I do all I can for you. My heart could be saying, hmm, I want to see him suffer. So we have to make sure that our heart and our lips become in agreement, that it unifies itself, that whatever is in the heart, that it will be a witness what's coming out of your mouth. Amen? And so as the people of God, let us be very careful how we allow certain things to come out of come out of our mouth. Uh, one of the things that I want to, um, one thing that you that write things down, uh, one thing that I wanted to, to note, that one of the reasons why we don't stay quiet is because we are uncomfortable being silent. We are so used to um, opening our mouth. We are used to Every person that have a word, I got to answer. And not all the time that you should be graced with just talking. Sometimes we have to just be quiet. Sometimes we just have to shut down. Sometimes, because the truth really be told, um, how many of you can ever say that, thank God I didn't say nothing? Anybody ever been in a situation? And then, and it'd be one time, I wish I wouldn't have said nothing. I wish I'd have kept my mouth shut. Because sometimes people don't hear to listen. Some people hear to respond. <laughs> sometimes people can be sitting right there with you and not really listening what is really being said. Y'all agree with that? But they only listening to respond. And one thing about me, I'm a very good listener. I'm a listen. And, and that I, I, our presiding bishop, y'all know that's how he was. He was he was king on listening. And one thing about it, he would, if you say one thing and come back, your story don't line up. He'll let you know, no, 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 you didn't, you didn't say that. You said this, right? So how do you respond is a question that you ought to ask yourself. Did you respond by you making sure that you heard it correctly or did you hear just to get a 
response. And so as the people of God, we understand that we that guard our mouth. As the scripture says here, he that keepeth. He said he that keepeth his mouth. Right? Or, or, or in other words, one translation, he that guards his mouth protects his life. He protects his life. If he watch what he says, but we got to learn how to watch what we say. Because the one that opened his lips, you know, he set a fire among himself. And if the truth really be told, a lot of people are not going through warfare. Some people are going through a season called reap what you sow. What did your mouth put out? What did you put out? Uh, how did you respond to a certain situation? Oh, I'm so sick and tired of the devil. It seemed like it's this one thing after another. Seemed like something always taking place. This, that, and the third. Have you ever took in consideration some of the stuff that you done sold? Did you not know every seed that you sow, you're going to reap that harvest? I don't care how long it takes to get here. I don't care if you change your life over to Christ. Some things that we sold before we even got saved, sometimes we start reaping them after we got saved. Right? What, what are you trying to say? Some people that have um, got in situations for us, uh, I, I speak basically of uh, eating, and we all can be guilty of this. Uh, in our youth, eating you know, uh, mom and them used to say, need to quit eating junk food, quit eating candy, quit, quit doing this. And, and we, we kept on eating it because it was good. But then in return, when cavities start to take place and you start going to the dentist and they start seeing all of these things that you have affected your body back in your youth, Right? In other words, you're reaping what you had already done in your past, right? So that's why I say that sometimes it's not always warfare. It's reaping what you sow. So we can ruin our own life by what comes out of our mouth. Is that all right, Elder? You, you, you want to add something? Well, I'd like to comment uh, on what he's saying. Again, about keeping your mouth. I was reading for notice a careless speech and an unbridled tongue can undermine our influence of righteousness, cause us to sin, and affect our relationship with God. Yes, it can. See, so it's just like, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, the bishop is saying, you know, we can open our mouth and sometimes we might not, we don't think what we're saying. <laughs> Before we say it. Right, right. But that's why I said unbridled. We got to keep a bit in our mouth and think before we speak. Because when we speak, and it's not what we wanted, it's what we wanted to say, but we know that we shouldn't have said it. Right. It, it's gone. You, you can't take it back. No. So it's a matter of uh, keeping your tongue under control and keeping your lips bridal as uh, David um, over here in the Psalms uh, 141 and 3 he says steady watch O Lord before my mouth keep the door of my lips yeah so if we pray to let, that the Lord will lead us and guide us in what to say and when to say it we'll be better off that, that's right but we we, in so many cases and so many times, we get up, to, uh, we prepare ourselves to say something, and we don't consent the law at first. That's right. And if we think about, just run that thing through your mind. Just keep running through your mind. Is this what I should say? Right. I mean, it'll be there. That's true. And, and I like what you said, Elder, because a lot of times... Whenever we, we respond, 
a certain way. Let's think about how it would make you feel if someone responded that way to you. I truly believe that if we as the people of God we evaluate how we come off on the individual and put ourselves in their shoes and how they will receive that because the truth really be told. The way you receive it, the other person may not receive it like that. Amen. That's why the attitude plays a big part in how you deliver your words. So we ruins our own reputation as he was reading. It's it, uh, uh, some footnotes that he had. What it was reputation and um, can this un un undermine our influence for righteousness? Wow, because Father people Jesus. are looking at us because Jesus would no longer come upon the earth realm. But he have to live through us. And with him living through us, if we are the living epistles which are being read by men, men are looking at us in how we respond. They are looking at us how we carry ourselves. That's what men are doing today. Because you may be the only Jesus that they ever see. Not saying that you are Jesus, but you are a reflection of who he is, right? And when we become a reflection uh, uh, of who Christ is, that's when we start to set a good example in front of our generation of people, right? And so we as the people of God, let us not uh, use our words uh, to only, you know, some people only use words just to condemn. Use your words to help edify. Use your word to help build them up. Because sometimes, my grandfather used to say this, when someone is down in the valley, you don't need to put your foot on them. Y'all remember he used to say that? He said, don't, don't hold your, put your hand down and help pick them up. And sometimes a kind word will pick them right up out of their situation, right? But, but oh, uh, the reason why you're down like that because you was this and you was that. Now they're going further, further, but we are a helper to one another, right? So uh, the one who guards his mouth protects his life and the one who opens his lips invite his own ruin. So that's in Proverbs 13 and 3. So the first thing was we become uncomfortable in being silent. Now, I'm not telling you to always be silent because there, be, there comes a time that you need to speak. I believe in Ecclesiastes chapter 3, he says a time to, for, 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 for uh to be born is a time to die. So in other words, there comes a season when certain things need to be done, right? You, you don't let no one uh, kill something when you can stand up for something, if that makes sense. Now, you don't have to argue about a situation, but you don't always have to be silent. But, but whenever I, I talk with individuals, um, I like to pray first. Sometimes I do it corporally, but then sometimes if someone say, Pastor, I need to meet with you in the office, I immediately go in prayer in my mind, my heart. Father, give me the right words. Give me the, the wisdom. Give me the understanding that I may respond correctly and, 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 and being timely at that because sometimes you can talk from the flesh and as the old church would say the flesh is a mess and when the flesh becomes a mess we can respond from the flesh when we should be responding from the spirit man did you not know there's different weight 
in the flesh versus the spiritual side. Uh, the Bible says to be carnal minded is death, but to be spiritual minded is life and peace. Uh, Elder Burton, I want to go to um, another scripture, uh, Proverbs 21 uh, and 23. Proverbs 21 and 23, uh, it says here, uh, Whosoever keepeth his mouth and his tongue, keepeth his soul from trouble. It's still, Proverbs in here is talking to us tonight about our lips. It kind of corresponds with uh, Proverbs 13. And, and our our lesson, when we consider talking about minding our mouth, um, sometimes our mouth sometimes shows our ignorance, if that makes sense. Now, I'm not saying that when you open your mouth, you're ignorant. That's not what I'm saying. But sometimes what comes out of our mouth shows how ignorant we are. Y'all agree with that? Because sometimes someone without knowledge and understanding comes off and you can see just how ignorant they really are. Right? And sometimes people be ignorant and don't even know it. <laughs> Go ahead, preacher. Since, since you mentioned that, I just like to throw this one out there. Go ahead. Proverbs 10 and 14 says, wise men lay up knowledge. All right. But the mouth of the foolish <laughs> is near destruction. Right. So right. It's, it's letting us know all the foolish talk that we do. Uh, you know, if you doing a lot of un talk that doesn't make sense, then it's not right. That's right. That's right. You know, that's why I say we need to ask the Lord to guide our tongue as David was praying in that psalm. To guide his tongue, put guide his lips. Because like the old saying says, if you never open your mouth, nobody will never know what you are. <laughs> That's so true. So when you open your mouth, a lot of things come out. But also when you keep your mouth closed, you still have to have a quiet spirit. That's right. Because you cannot open your mouth and somebody will still know who you are <laughs> by your actions. That, that, that's so true. Uh, Elder Burton, this is another scripture, Proverbs 12 and 15. Uh, it, it says here, uh, the way of a fool is right in his own eyes. Mm -hmm. But he that hearken unto counsel is wise. Yes. So, in other words... One thing about growing spiritually, you have to be in a place, a spiritual place, where you can receive wise counsel and how to control our lips. Because when our lips get away from us, you can't take it back. You may plead to them that I'm sorry, I apologize, will you accept my apology? And, and, and they probably will. But nines out of ten, deep down <laughs> in the inside, they still remember. Amen. Y'all agree with that? They still remember what was said, what was done. So we have to be very careful as a people of God that we make sure that when we open our mouth, make sure let it God speak through you. Uh, we said last week, made the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in our sight. Oh, Lord, our God, our strength and our redeemer, right? So whatever comes out let it be seasoned with the things of God right 
Because I want God to be pleased with everything that I got to say. I want God to be pleased with everything that comes out of my mouth. Because I want him to be honored to know, say, you know what? He uses his lips, his mouth wisely. Because my grandfather used to get on me all the time. He said, son, you need to watch your mouth. And I never understood it till I got a child of my own. And now that as a child, because sometimes children don't know certain things are disrespectful. Amen. Until you tell them. You know, you're joking with them and playing with them. And sometimes what comes out of their mouth can be very disrespectful. And you have to let them know Amen. that, hey, you know, I know you're probably joking, but you don't joke like that. Yeah, I remember some years ago, I was in school, Elder Burton, and the teacher called on me, and she, she really lied on me. And I stand flat-footed. I'm standing in God's holy place here. She lied on me. I mean, she really, she really lied on me. And she called my grandfather and said, Michael said he wasn't going to do nothing, this, that, and the third. And that's not how that story went. We was in science class and everybody, everybody in the class forgot their gloves and they was messing with a sheep brain. And we had to, you know, cut it open and different things like that. And I told him, I'm not touching that with my bare hands. You know, it's, you know, I, that was just me. She called back to my grandfather and said, he said he wasn't going to do nothing. He backed away from the table. I was like, no, I didn't say that. And I allowed my lips to get away from me. And I tried to say it as soft as I could. I said, well, Granddaddy, believe what you want to believe. <laughs> I didn't know that was a bad word until I got hit. <laughs> I didn't know that was a bad word. I I mean, my grandfather, he he got up. I thought I cursed or something. <laughs> I just say, believe what you want to believe. But truthfully, that was disrespectful. It was very disrespectful. But I did, I, you know, I, 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 <laughs> I was just saying, okay, you can believe it however you believe it. You know, she right. That, that, that was my intentions, you know. Well, I'm going to be wrong anyway. Believe what you want to believe. You know, but it didn't come out like that. <laughs> and y'all know my granddaddy was a, he wasn't no little man. He was, he was a big fella. And, but I tell you what, I learned from that day forward. And I'm going to be honest with you. My grandfather was a little feeble and up in age and wasn't that strong, but I was still scared of that man. Until he went to the graveyard, I was scared of him even while he was sick. Because he, not say he put that fear in me, but that respect that I had. Right? And, and you respect the individual. And my grandfather was so keen on your mouth in church, he didn't allow you to disrespect nobody. Not in his presence. I remember some years ago, and, and Elder Burton probably remember this, we was in a, a church meeting, and I was just voicing my opinion. <laughs> you know what my grandfather say? You don't rebuke no elders right here. <laughs> I wasn't rebuking, but I would just, you know, you know, they give you a chance to talk. But he, what he thought was disrespectful with our mouth, he would, he would get you right there. And guess what? I learned to shut up. I, I could go as far as one time something happened in the church. And I normally be voiceful about a lot of things. Now, let me tell you this. Sometimes your mouth don't have to say it. Your face expression. <laughs> right? And something went left in the church. 
And my granddad looked at me and I looked, I was like, you know, I had kind of, and he rebuked me and I didn't even say a word. He rebuked me because the way I was looking. Yeah. That's what I just <laughs> said. You ain't got to say it all the time. You sure? So in other words, sometimes you don't have to say a word. The way you present, the way you, you know, look. That's why I ask the Lord now, Lord, now that I done worked on my mouth, Lord, work on my facial. Because y'all can tell when something go left in here. And, and the young people from the church, they, they so petty. They really petty. They're, they're, they're screenshot the video and, and, and they're, they're sending me the video to my, what was going on with you today? And, and, and it be, I let this here get away. But I'm working on that. I'm working on that. I'm working on that. Elderberg, you want to add something else? Well, I just uh, keep coming up with different ones. You know, I know we read Proverbs, but Proverbs speaks a lot about the mouth. Yeah. And if you go to, well, and it basically referring to the same thing. Proverbs 18 and 7. Say, a fool's mouth is his destruction, mm -hmm. and his lips are the snare of his soul. So when we don't say the things like we should, it might not be wrong, but we have to say it in the right way That's or right. in the right time, like the bishop said earlier. Excuse me. Right. Because... You have to be, it's, it all boils down to, you have to be wise in your speech. Right. It's basically what it is. We just have to be wise. Right. We're Christians, and we're supposed to have something to look to to make us not speak when we're not supposed to or not say things that we shouldn't say. And I'm not talking about vulgar stuff. It's just like what we were talking about <laughs> a few minutes ago when you, Told the bishop, think what you want. Yeah. You know. Wrong hey, word. If I told my mama to think what you want, I wouldn't have no tea. <laughs> right. <laughs> but that's, I mean, you know, it's just, the, as you might want to say, the times are, it's just how things come out of children's mouth, as you stated in there in right. the beginning. But if you don't train and tell them right. and just let it go, oh, that's cute. No. Yeah. If it's wrong, it's not cute. That's right. If they're being disrespectful, no matter how funny it might be for them saying it, or where right. did he hear that from, or right. how do he know about this, we have to chastise them. That's it's right. It's not always about how we're speaking, but what we allow our children to say and how we allow them to talk to us. Right. You know, parents today, I, I mean, <laughs> I couldn't be a parent today, <laughs> you know. Because they let the children talk to him any kind of way. Oh, he's just a child. No, no. No, no. <laughs> uh, that's right. He is just a child. And he's supposed to be trained how he should speak. Right. And when he should speak. Right. Not just fly off his mouth when he don't like something or say something that he doesn't heard somebody else say. I'm not saying take a stick and beat him, but you sit him down and talk to him and explain to him the situation and what it is. That's right. Amen. That's right, uh, Elder. Um, I want to look at another scripture, uh, Proverbs 16 and 21. Um, it says, the wise in heart shall be called prudent, and the sweetness of the lips increases learning. So, in other words, you can tell how wise an individual is by what comes out of their mouth. I don't know if anybody ever witnessed this. Uh, <clears throat> I get this all the time. I, I mean, I really get this all the time. and it, I don't know to take it offense <laughs> or what, but the younger generation, they would say, oh, you preach like them old school preachers. Like, what do you mean? Like, I'm preaching the word. Like, because I'm not preaching prosperity and, and, and you you receiving this. No, I'm I'm teaching and preaching 
something that's going to help benefit you. Because after you dance, after you shout, you need something to live on. After you ate, did, did you not know candy only lasts for a little bit? But when you put some rice and some beans and something solid in there, it'll hold you for a little bit. Right? Because sometimes when, we, when we're when we working, we'll put a piece of mint in our mouth or a piece of candy, Sister Renee, and we'll, we'll eat it and it'll hold us at least till lunch. But when you go to lunch and get something solid, Sometimes that'll hold you for the rest of the day. So in other words, we as the people of God, we need to receive some solid food. Now, the, the Bible did speak of them that are babes in Christ, desire sin, sincere milk of the word of God. So you don't, you don't give them nothing to choke them. But we that start to mature in the things of God, we need things a little bit more solid. That it could bring back remembrance. As David said, it's the word that I hid in my heart. Did you not know a lot of us don't sin because we're reminded of the word? Right? I don't know about you all. Even the way you think sometimes, you'll be reminded through by the word. I, I was listening at uh, Overseer. Uh, I got a CD in my truck and she was preaching. She was talking about um, Christian living. And she was talking about mortifying these deeds of us. Now, we heard that all through our life how we ought to turn loose this, turn loose that. Let me tell you something. What that did do, that got embedded in our spirit, man. And now we don't even, go, we don't even come close to that because we have been taught that, right? But there are some people that don't believe certain things is wrong. Y'all agree with that? Because they're listening at the preacher. Uh, we, can go, we can go to communion. We can look at communion. When we was brought up in the, I, I can, I'm not going to say the old church, but the true church, the real church, everybody don't take communion. No. <clears throat> when you go to 1 Corinthians, I believe 11, it talks about uh, uh, the warning if you take the Lord's Supper unworthy. But some people were taught that is a ritual, that that there is something everybody do. And 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 be honest with you, I I I I know we have a lot more. I, you could give people the word, but they have to be able to willing to accept it. Amen. Right? I can't go up there and say, "Oh, you can't take it." No, that the Bible say not. It, it's required at your hand. Right? And and when I was brought up as a child, you you didn't do certain things when they would have communion. Only the, the saved ones went up. The one that was trying to do right. I dare won't see somebody shacking coming up and taking no communion. That, 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 that didn't work in the old church. <laughs> right, right. And it shouldn't work now. But people don't give people warnings. And what happens is what they have heard in their past teaching, it never challenged them. So when they change Reformation, as they say, you can take the man out the country, but you can't take the country out the man. Do that make sense? So when people move from different Reformations to other Reformation, and people still stuck with what they were taught, but sometimes you got to unlearn what you already learned and, and get down to the nitty gritty and say, hey, this is what this word is saying. So the, the wise in the heart shall be called prudent and the sweetness of the lips increases learning. So we as the people of God, when we learn how to be wise in our communication and let us know one thing that you're learning. Right. Uh, another thing that I wanted you to, to write down um, is it's wisdom when you know how to keep your mouth shut. It's wisdom when you know when to open, when to shut. <laughs> I'm learning that. Sometimes you have to walk away. Anybody ever had to walk away? From a conversation, uh, a conversation, you you saw 
something just wasn't right. And, and, and sometimes when people are talking, that's why you have to be careful. And that's what I like about people here. It, it, it's a mixture here. You got some that have zero tolerance of foolishness. And that's a wonderful thing. Then you got some people that were entertained. You got some people that love to hear the latest gossip. You got some people that love to hear people talk about other people. But then you have those zero tolerance individuals that are in the church. Say, you know what? I don't want nothing to do with that. Did you not know you guarding yourself? You guarding your heart? Because when that stuff go in your ears, you may not believe it, but you'll start looking by what they were saying. And it can affect you spiritually. Right? We have some blabber mouths in church. All they talk about is negative. They're always talking foolish stuff. Right? But then you got those people that say, hey, we just need to pray about it. I don't even want to know. Because one thing about it, you can stop an individual before they start. While they get ready to talk, and you know they're going left, say, hold, hold on, let us pray. Let us do this. Because we don't want to be involved in tearing another brother or sister down. Amen. I was in an incident where an individual was tearing down so many people in the church. I stopped the conversation. I'm done. I'm over. Let's go. Because you're not going to use your moment with me to try to get me to agree with you. And then when you get mad with me, then you go out and say, well, Bishop allowed me to talk about y'all and he agreed with me. I won't get caught in that foolishness. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. Oh. This, that, and the third. That, and the third. No, first of all, I'm about like, like grandma used to say, you point your finger at one individual, you got three more pointing right back at you. The, the Bible say the same way you, the, the, you try to judge somebody else, you're being judged by the same measure. And sometimes even worse, trying to pull a mold out of somebody's eye and you got a beam sitting in yours. We're living in a sad situation that people can always, we read in one part of the scripture, uh, the, the, the foolish person is wise in their own eyes. And not all the time that they got to come out with their mouth, they can text stuff to you. They get behind the computers. <laughs> let, let us go to another scripture. I know I, I upset some people real quick with this. Uh, let's go to, we, we had a good time in, in, in Proverbs tonight. Proverbs is a wisdom chapter. And it must have knew that we have problem with our lips. <laughs> knew that we were going to have trouble. Knew that we were going to have some conflict yes. with our mouth. And if the truth really be told, we do have that problem. Amen. We do have that problem. I don't care how, how you know, even sometimes the quiet ones, if you get them talking. <laughs> so about, oh, oh, the, the, yeah, you, 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 you get that quiet one that don't normally talk, but you get them heated up under that collar. My God, today. Let, let's look at James uh, chapter 1, verse 19. James chapter 1, verse 19. James 1. It said, Wherefore, my beloved brethren, let every man be swift to hear, slow to speak, slow to wrath. Mm. Isn't that good? It said, When we talk too much and listen too little, we communicate to others that we think our ideas are much more important than theirs. 
You ever seen somebody won't let you get a word in? And they feel as though that they got all the words. Now, what I have learned to do now while you're talking, and I'm learning this. Listen. Because sometimes people start talking too much and forget they saying what they're saying. <laughs> and like, like they can't remember nothing they said. Oh, I didn't say that. I'm sitting here listening. So now, truthfully, now I got to get a record out. When I'm going to start having, when I start having meetings, I'm going to start getting some recordings out so I can record Okay, since I'm not telling you the truth, I'm going to play back what you said. Amen. That's when you're talking too much. You don't even know what you even saying. It just sounds good because you're talking. You think your ideals or your approach sounds much better. What you got to say, Elder? Well, I just finished you over in James. Uh, <coughs> excuse me. James 26. One in, uh, one in 26. If any man among you seem to be religious and bright of not his tongue, but deceiveth his own heart, this man's religion is vain. Mm. In other words, if you're not controlling your mouth and doing like you're supposed to do, you got a test. <clears throat> Excuse me. You got a testimony that's an hour long. <laughs> you ain't doing nothing but fooling yourself. That's Your right. Religion is vain. If you got an hour testimony, somebody ought to have a two hour testimony about you. Right. Because you ought to be showing something. That's right. That's right. And, and, and while, while, while an elder is talking, listen, and, 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 and I definitely try to, to encourage the church. Just because you talk loud don't mean the spirit is rolling Amen. and the spirit is moving. <laughs> the, the church has confused us the movement of the Holy Ghost. Yes. We have confused it by somebody talking loud that the Holy Ghost is moving. No. You can be soft-spoken and the Holy Ghost can move. Yes, it can. Right? So, the, the scripture says, wherefore, my beloved brethren, let a man be swift to hear. Right? Slow. As, uh, you know, I keep referring back to my leaders because I, they, they taught me, you know, practically all I know when it comes to the things of God. Grandma used to say, it makes sense why God gave us two ears and one mouth. Amen. It makes a lot of sense. He wants us to hear as twice as much as we run our mouth. Now, what if it was vice versa? He gave us two mouth and one ear. Oh, we would be in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> oh already. Jesus Boy, you, you, we thought our lips was getting away from us how do you know it would run it would, it, would, it would be gone but he want us to listen process it listen when you're listening process it take it in then think about what you're going to say then speak but if you listening and then start responding, did you listen to respond or did you listen to get an understanding? Right? Amen. So as we, my footnotes, let me finish reading my footnotes on that one. It says, James wisely advised us to reverse this process. Put a mental stopwatch on your conversation and keep track of how much you talk and how much you listen. 
when people talk with you, do you feel that their viewpoint and ideals have value? That means a lot, don't it? Our ideal is not always the best ideal. Amen. That's why I try to tell people, when you look at the church, the pastor cannot build the church by himself. It's impossible. Because it takes a body of people working together, help building the ministry. It's not a one-man show. Uh, that's why we're doing more of, and we, we're going to do more with, with panel teaching. Because I noticed in the older generation, it was not say a one-man show, but one leader would talk. And people, you know, they, 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 they took what the pastors said. But this generation now, we got to be a little wiser. Because they think now that sitting up here listening at someone with a lecture it's boring, but if you make it more of a talk show or you make it more different viewpoints from each individual, people can get different perspectives concerning um, about the lesson. As we deal with the lesson, talking about um, dealing with, uh, uh, what, what's the name of the lesson? Mouth. Mind in our mouth. See, that's why you need two. When one, <laughs> when one get Sleepy in the head with, so in other words, Elder Burton is twice my age, but he have a more different aspect than what I think sometimes in dealing with our mouth. Because he was raised in a generation, as he stated earlier, if he'd have said that to his mama, what I said to my granddaddy, he'd have been... No teeth. Right? Mm -hmm. yeah. He'd have had dentures early. Yeah, amen. <laughs> <laughs> I just made me don't let him give dentures. <laughs> so, so in other words, different perspectives, different knowledge, wisdom. Uh, what do he say? They're older because they what? Know the way. They're wiser. Young because they're stronger. Now, my grandfather, he got an age, he wasn't as strong physically in his body, but he was sharp in his mind. Amen. He, he was a, you know, he might be needed help getting up out the chair. But I tell you what, while he's sitting in that chair, if you listen, <laughs> he said, boo man, I'm trying to tell you, son. He said, well, I tell you what, the Lord going to let you see. A lot of things I wish I can go and talk to him and say, Granddaddy, you was right about this. You was right about that. You know, when, when they when they when they point out all that wisdom and all that, we nah it, it no no. But when they're no longer accessible to you, you see all the wisdom that they gave you. My grandfather say, son. This is what it is. And I said, nah. I said, Granddad, I think you're wrong this time, man. I think you're wrong. Not, not in a disrespectful way, but I was like, Granddad, nah, I don't think it's like that. I said, I think that's, that's you. And when my grandfather closed his eyes, I saw people for who they really were. I saw it. People say, oh, this, that, and the third. And if he's supposed to be your spiritual father, I should at least saw you. Right? Who going to let their mama or their father and not be there? It just, we all risked our life. We, how many of you say we all risked our life when we went to the funeral? We all. But the love that you have. So he said, be swift to hear. Slow to speak. How many of you ever, oh, uh, your mama or something, and say, you just fly out the hammer? Anybody ever heard that? 
I remember, and I hope my mama don't mind me sharing this. Mama used to get mad and uh, granddaddy be right there. And when mama get mad, everybody going to know it. This is before, you know, she, she, she saved now. I ain't saying she not saved. And <laughs> my, my granddaddy, when, she, when mama might go to running, he jump up and he grab a bottle. <laughs> and y'all know my granddaddy has some big hands, right? But when mama go to run, because she going to let you know what time it is, granddaddy say, Charlie. And he'd jump up and he'd put his hand he had put his hand all over a mouth. <laughs> and so in other words, sometimes our mouth is just like that. It will run away from you. Right? Amen. Amen. It, 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 will, it, it will take off and it don't need no gas. <laughs> it don't need a motor. Am I right? All it need is an opening. And a tongue that'll flap. Yes, sir. So um, we pray that we got something out the lesson, and we're gonna uh, we're gonna move from from this lesson. Um, we're gonna come up with uh, as the Lord give it. Um, how many of you enjoyed mind your mind your mouth on uh, these these segments? How many of you really enjoyed it? Uh, I think, how many of you thought it was beneficial? It helped you. I, I know that uh, just because, <clears throat> just because you see someone that is always quiet and not talking, that don't always mean that you can run those type of people over. Because a lot of times people sit back and they listen. I used to think this years ago because I was raised here. When the word is going forth and it, it handicapped me when I first started preaching. And everybody is, go ahead. Yeah, preach. Oh, you telling the truth. And you preaching, and boy, the church responding. Y'all know how Bishop always taught this church to respond to the word. But there comes a time that you may go to a church where they don't even do that. Am I right, Elder? Yeah. <laughs> you, you, you go places, and it's not that they are not listening. It's not that they are not paying you any attention. But sometimes people sit back, writing, taking in what you're saying, and they may not be responding, but they're listening. Right? And, and, and I'm going to be honest with you, that handicapped me when I first started preaching. It, it handicapped me, and I went to this church, and boy, coming from True Way, and then went over there and preached in another church. I mean, you can hear rats run across carpet. And I'm saying to myself, like, Lord, have mercy. I'm, I, I, I wish I'd have stayed home. And then when you, you get out of, oh, we enjoyed that word. And I'm saying to myself, I couldn't tell. <laughs> but I had to be conditioned that just because people are not responding, that don't mean they're not listening. Right? So... We thank God for this lesson uh, for the last three weeks, minding our mouth, um, and we dealt with all different perspectives. Um, we can speak blessings upon our life with our mouth. You know, I can do all things through Christ who give us strength. Um, you know, let God know that whatever, uh, I, I, I was listening at uh, another sermon Bishop preached on Saturday uh, while I was working. And he says, sometimes you got to remind God. Say, God, it's your job to do this. You know, you, you talk to him. Let him, God, it's your job to, to heal my body. It's your job. Now, God, I need you to step in and do what you do best. 
Quit, quit getting to the place in life, oh, that you feel as though that, oh, my words don't mean anything. Let me tell you something. God loves when we can take his word and talk back to him with it. Remind him. Right? Remind him and say, Lord, you see it. You see it in your word. That's why when you get the word of God on the inside of you, you can tell, you can talk back to God and say, God, you said this. You, you said, you said you're not a God that you were. Shall I? Neither are you a God that you. So in other words, God, whatever you say, I'm going to send it right back to you because I want you to do it. Speak blessings over your life. I'm going to be a lender and not a borrower. Right? I may be between that now, but one day I'm going to get there. Right? And sometimes, be honest with you, you may not be able, you may not be a, a great financial lender as big uh, companies are, but a lot of us that lend some money that we know we'll never receive. Right? How many of you done lends, lent some people some money and, 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 and you know good and well you are going to get it back? And then they get an attitude when you don't move and they time it. <laughs> and I'm going to be honest with y'all, I hate this thing called Cash App. Cash App has messed people up. Now they, 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 they begging you for money and, and they don't even have to see you. Y'all ain't gonna talk. All you gotta do now is cash up. Y'all know about cash up. You that have children, grandchildren, all it takes. Uh, my little daughter, I'm gonna tell you how she got me one night. She was on something. And she said, Daddy, I need you to cash out me $20 or something. And, and I say, For what? Uh, I got to do this. I got to. And boy, I tell you what, she got me, I, pre, I believe, probably out of $40. Trying to, she told, "Oh, I'm gonna send it back. I just, I just got to do something." But you don't have to have cash now. But be careful about the ones that's crying poor mouth that'll get what they want and beg for what they need. Watch some type of folks, right? Hey, listen at them. I, I'm to the point now. I'm not no lending institution. <laughs> People just be calling you, thinking you some lending institution or something. Where y'all get that from? <laughs> I know God done bless me. I, I, I know we we all know. We still ain't no lending institution, right? But we thank God. Elder, you want to say something? No, I, I'm good. All right, so. We thank God tonight uh, for the lesson, and we thank God for our viewers uh, that views with us um, faithfully. I'm looking at it. We got people viewing with us all the way from uh, Washington State over there near California. Oh, praise our God. Oh, we got some viewing from Ainer, Florence. Praise our God. We thank God for all our listeners, all the members that are on. We thank God for you. But listen, next week, same place, same time, here at the True Way Holiness Church. Um, we're going to be in another series um, debating what we're going to talk about. Um, how many of you enjoy Elder Burton teaching? Praise the Lord. We had Pastor Carr with us last week. Praise the Lord. So <clears throat> we're going to share the, 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 the platform with our preachers and teachers um, and just have fun with, with Bible study. Do y'all think it's a little bit more interesting this way versus, you know, nothing, it don't take nothing away from us, but it makes it we can interact with, you know, you know, yeah, right, with all ages. And not only that, we won't, Want the, the the audience to 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 interact as well. You got something you want to say because what you may say, uh, what your input may be, it may help someone that's listening, right on Facebook, because I have seen that it's like, oh my, uh, who is that such and such? 
oh, I, they, they taught something that I, I really was going through. So you never know. So we thank God for you. We love you. Uh, let us close. Kind Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you. Father, we praise you. Father, for this opportunity, Father, that we was able to share tonight. Father, through by your word. Father, encouraging us, oh God, to mind our mouth. Father, we pray, God, that you put a control upon our mouth. In the name of the Lord Jesus, God, that we may speak a word, oh God, in season, oh God. In the name of the Lord Jesus, God, we give you praise, God, for every listener, oh God, that's listening from far and near. Oh God, that is tuned in with us, God, we ask you to bless them, oh God, like never before. But now, God, as we leave this place, never from your presence, God, keep us covered under the blood. This we ask in Jesus' name, amen.